looking online at all the different 5x7 or 7x6 sealed beam headlight upgrades for your stock H6054 sealed beam headlights, it can be kind of overwhelming. There's actually a bunch of different options, even though that headlight style, that square 5 inch by 7 inch sealed beam headlight isn't very common anymore. In this video, we wanted to show you all the different LED headlights that are on the market. We're going to show you a couple HID options and some halogen options. Compare and contrast each one so you get a pretty good idea of what's available to you and let you decide which ones are best for your vehicle. My name is Chris and you can find these products and many more like it at www.headlightrevolution.com or you can check out our brand new website just for sealed beam headlight upgrades, nothing else, at headlightsuperstore.com. Because there are so many different 5x7 or 7x6 housings, we're actually going to do this video comparison in two parts. Part one is going to be all about the different LED 5x7 headlights. Part two is going to be different halogen and HID 5x7 headlights. The first group of 5x7 headlights we are going to show you are the LED housing replacements. This is the housing and the bulb all in one, so it's kind of like a sealed beam headlight. But instead of using a halogen type system with a filament inside, like this stock 6052, the LEDs have the housing with a circuit board and LEDs encased inside, and it's all sealed. There's nothing to maintain. So it's kind of like the same idea as the original sealed beam product, but it's all brand new technology. So all of these replace your 6052 or 6054 seal beam headlights like this one here. This is probably what you're used to seeing in a lot of older vehicles and farm trucks and semi trucks. Um, it's a glass housing with a lot of fluting on the front and on the back side you can see the three prongs to control the high and low beam are built in. This is all glass, you can't cut it apart and take the headlight out. You can't take the bulb out and replace it with a new one. It's all sealed, it's one piece. So. These weren't very bright, and they're also extremely inefficient. So when we're looking at what's available to replace this style of light with, probably the best option nowadays are LED housings. If LED isn't what you're interested in, next up I'll show you some halogen and HID replacements. The first LED headlight that I wanna show you is the United Pacific 31297. This is kind of the new kit on the block. United Pacific just released this headlight model last year and it is uh, a very inexpensive version. It's good light output, it's good build quality. It's actually all around a very good item. I'm gonna show you why you might want this one over one of the other ones, um, but this is a brand new one that you probably haven't seen before. Next, I'll show you the JW Speaker 8900 Evolution. This is the new version of the 8900 from JW Speaker. They didn't change the look of it at all, but they made it cheaper in price and a lot brighter. The next one we'll go over is the Truck Light 27450C. It uses two LEDs, one on the top, one on the bottom. It's a very clean, modern looking headlight, and it has been a favorite for a long time because it makes good light output and it's fairly inexpensive. The last one I'll show you to compare to all of these is this Chinese one that we got on eBay. Uh, it doesn't have a brand, doesn't have a warranty. It actually even has a fan inside. So it's kind of an interesting piece. We'll show you that one last. First, let's start with the United Pacific 31297. The United Pacific 31297 5x7 LED headlight sells for a little over $200. It is DOT approved with a hardened polycarbonate lens. The low beam is created by one Philips LED in the top reflector, producing 1,000 lumens of light. The high beam is created by four Philips LEDs on the lower part of the light producing roughly 3,000 lumens. The low beam draws 1.64 amps of power at 12 volts DC. The high beam pulls 2.66 amps at 12 volts DC. This light has an automatic 12 to 24 volt DC input, and it comes with a three-year warranty. The JW Speaker 8900 Evolution is DOT approved, has a hardened polycarbonate lens with an aluminum housing. The low beam produces 1,350 lumens of light. The high beam produces 1,770 lumens of light. The low beam draws 2.3 amps at 12 volts DC, and the high beam draws 2.8 amps at 12 volts DC. This light has a 12 to 24 volt DC input, made in America with a lifetime warranty. The truck light 27450C is also DOT approved, has a hardened polycarbonate lens with an aluminum housing. 
The low beam is rated at 1300 lumens. Actually, that's the only lumen rating that truck light provides and you have to dig pretty hard to get it. We actually suspect that the total lumen output of this light is 1,300 lumens, 650 lumens for low beam and 650 lumens for high beam. The low beam power draw is 1.2 amps at 12 volts DC. The high beam power draw is 3.6 amps at 12 volts DC. This light has a 12 to 24 volt DC input with a three-year warranty. This 5x7 LED headlight does not have a brand. It does not have a part number. There are no specs on it. I can't tell you lumen rating, amperage draw, or anything. It is not DOT approved. It does not have a hardened polycarbonate lens. And the power source is five Epistar LED chips. This light uses a fan inside the housing for cooling. The United Pacific 31297 is a really nice light for a few different reasons. First of all, you see the back side of it has a really nice rounded shape, so there's no square, so it's real similar to the original seal beam head headlight that would have originally fit where you would put this one. So fitment issues are really non-existent. The top has a little aluminum cone area where the wires come out of, and you can see that there's an extra seal for waterproofing. That's really nice. The back side also has the part number and the voltage input listed. But the thing I really like about it is the moisture vent and the wiring with the connector. The wiring is just your three standard wires coming out, but it's wrapped in this uh, abrasion resistant covering. And this is something that uh, we haven't really seen before. So I really like that. This will keep your wires safe when you're installing it and uh, you know potentially smashing the wires somewhere accidentally. And then the connector itself is really beefy. A lot of connectors are small and kind of fragile. This one, you've got even some finger grips on it. So you've got a lot of you know, uh, strength available to plug it in and take it out. Not that that's a big deal. We just like seeing really nice big connectors. On the back side, you can see the moisture vent here. It's a really nice uh, plastic moisture vent and the top you can see where the part number is listed. And the interesting thing on this side is in the production process, uh, the top of the back side must have been open and to seal it, they use black potting material. So that tells us that the entire internals of this headlight are sealed for waterproof ratings. The JW Speaker 8900 Evolution on the back side also looks really nice. It's shallower than it used to be and it's the uh, most shallow light on the table. So if you're looking for fitment, the JW Speaker 8900 Evolution is probably your best bet. You can see it comes off the table only a couple of inches and it's really, really curved on either side. So that's a really nice design on the back side of the headlight. You see the heat sink design is really beefy also. There's really uh, no worries about cooling with the JW Speaker headlight. The wiring comes out of a really nicely sealed potted uh, recessed area in the corner. So unlike the other three where it's coming right out the very you know, high spot of the housing, um, this one, it, it actually gives you extra clearance, the JW Speaker 8900, because it's not coming off the tall point of the headlight. This is just smart engineering. You know, there's really nothing more to it than that. It's just something that makes sense. So that's one reason why the 8900 is considered the best LED five by seven on the market. You can also see the yellow dot. That is a moisture vent to help keep the inside of the lens nice and clean. You can see the back side here. And JW Speaker does a really nice job with their stickers. Uh, the stickers tell you the production date of this exact headlight, the, the month and the year it was manufactured. And there's also the sticker that tells you the input voltage and the model number and other pertinent information for installation. The Trucklight 27450C is overall a really nice headlight, but on the back side they do something that uh, could probably be improved upon. Not that having the heat sink fins is an issue because this one doesn't really have an insane amount of light to cool down anyway, but look at how big it is compared to the other ones that are available. and they went and made your wiring come out at the very tallest point of the housing. So for fitment, this might not work for some applications. Um, 
It has really good wires, it has a really good connector, but I mean, is there really a reason for it to be so massive? I really feel like they could have engineered it better so the wires came out the side somewhere or at a different point. Um, but I think it's just kind of the nature of this product because you know this is the only one that has a full reflector system. So this reflector bowl had to go somewhere, right? So that's, I mean, that's essentially what you're seeing. So it makes a really decent light output, but the size of it is not at all considered low profile. If that doesn't bother you, it's still a great product to use. Really the only thing on the back side is that it tells you uh, do not remove because there's this little moisture vent right there. Uh, it's really smooth, it is nice quality, but there's really not a whole lot to point out on the back of the truck light headlight. On the Chinese projector LED, uh, just like there's nothing on the front, there's also no written information on the back. It doesn't tell you input voltage, it doesn't say DOT, it doesn't say who made it, it doesn't have a model number. Um, they did some things good and they did some things poorly. Uh, the first thing they did good is that this connector, the H4 3 pin, is actually a really decent connector. I'm, I'm actually a fan of this one over some of the other ones. But I mean, in terms of the overall quality of the product, that's probably the part that scores the least points overall. It's not really that important. This really bugs me. There's something going on. You know, this is how they sealed the entire headlight. You see how much play there is in this rubber? Um, it's really not actually sealed very well. And you can even go so far as to pull this rubber cap off and get a look inside the housing. You get to this point and that's not gonna take much for water to get in. What's the worst thing that could possibly happen to your LED electronics? Get water. You know, heat is a big deal, but they all have heat sinks. This one uh, is not waterproof. All the other ones are IP67 or IP68 rated waterproof. So this is my big problem with the generic Chinese LED headlights. They look good on the outside, but as soon as you start tearing into them to see how they tick, you find stuff like this, and that's a deal breaker. For a budget LED 5x7 sealed beam headlight replacement, my favorite one is the United Pacific 31297. It's a new product that kind of takes the best of uh, everything and combines it into a moderately priced option. Uh, the way that it works on the front, you can see you have two sets of LEDs. You have this bar that comes down from the top with a little uh, place to, to, to hold the LED on the back side. The front says LED and the, the LED is actually on the back side facing inward, shining into the reflector, kind of like the truck light version where the LED shines backwards and then the reflector creates your light output. Then on the bottom, we have four more LEDs that turn on for your high beam. So when you have high beam on, you have all five LEDs fired up. And the cool thing about this product is it uses Philips LEDs. You know, they're name brand, they're really high quality. You really shouldn't have any issues in terms of color or defect with this product. On the face of the lens on the bottom corner, it says U D O T S A E H L 13. So this is a DOT and SAE approved headlight. And I'm gonna turn the low beam on and you can see what that looks like. One super bright LED at the top that shines backwards to create your low beam. And then when you go to high beam, the four on the bottom also turn on. So with all five LEDs on, we're getting about 3000 lumens of light. So it's actually a really impressive light output. The JW Speaker 8900 Evolution has long time been considered the best 5x7 LED headlight on the market, but most people shied away from it because of its price. It's recently come down. You're looking at a little over 300 bucks for one of these headlights, where it used to be nearly $600 a piece. So that's a pretty big improvement right there. Not only did they lower the price, they also made it way less and put more light out on the road. The way it works is you have two D-shaped projectors and that creates your main left to right beam pattern. You have one projector at the top center and that's your low beam. And then two projectors on either side and the bottom and those turn on for your high beam. So we actually get just this projector for low beam and just those two for high beam. At the top of the projector, you have SAE HLP10 embossed in the bezel 
And on the very bottom, below the high beam projectors, it has the speaker logo, so you know you're getting the real thing. One thing that we've started seeing coming out of China a lot is knockoffs of the JW speaker brand, and they are terrible, especially in comparison to the real thing. So on low beam, we have the two D-shaped projectors on the outside and the single uh, round projector at the top. And for high beam, the projectors switch. Now we have the, the two lower projectors turned on and the upper one is off. The Trucklight 27450C is a really great design. It has long been the low cost leader in the LED 5x7 market and it's okay because Trucklight did a really good job with it. If you like the looks of this one and it fits your budget, it's definitely not a bad buy. Embossed in the top of the lens, it has the Trucklight logo and it has the word top so you know your orientation is correct when installing. At the bottom side of the lens, embossed in the center, it says DOT SAE HL11. The way this one works is there's a circuit board on the top of this divider and a circuit board on the bottom. And for low beam, the LED shines up and back into the reflector to create a half moon shaped light output for the low beam. And on high beam, the bottom side lights up too. It's a really interesting look because when you're just on low beam, it's a distinct cutoff when looking at the housing, just the very top section turns on. And then for high beam, the whole thing lights up. So this is what your low beam looks like. As you can see, there's no action on the bottom side whatsoever. It's a single LED that creates a lot of light. So you have to give truck light some props here for making a lot with little. Then when you go to high beam, you can see the whole thing lights up. This last one I wanted to show you is a direct from China import. It doesn't have a brand, it doesn't have a part number. It's a really kind of interesting product. It's like, it's trying to look like the JW speaker line. It has kind of the same style and look to it, but they did deviate enough so much that we can't really call it a copy. The way it works is that you have three Epistar LED chips at the top behind these projector lenses. And on the bottom, you have two more Epistars in small reflectors. The low beam is the top three, the high beam is all five. On the front of it, it doesn't say DOT or SAE or LED or anything. So technically this one isn't legal to use on the street. And if you were to get inspected, it'd probably make you swap out your headlights for something legal. When I turn it on, you can see the top three LEDs fired up. And the thing that you're gonna see when we shine these against the wall for the beam pattern test is Chinese lights are notorious for having a really narrow beam pattern. It's fairly bright, you know, you can't really uh, argue that, but when you compare it to something like the JW speaker or the United Pacific lights, it's a quarter of the width of these other styles. The United Pacific 31297 is kind of messy looking at first glance, but this is kind of the deceiving part about shining it against a white wall where you can see all the funny uh, lines and shapes that the light makes. When you have this going down a horizontal plane, you know, on the road in front of you, all that stuff kind of smooths out and just becomes one big beam pattern. So don't let that worry you in terms of this type of uh, beam pattern showcase. Now, you see the center section is extremely bright. It's actually brighter than we thought it would be with the lumen rating. And we do have a nice cutoff line. And then you also have kind of this semi-bright arc above the center section. I think that's really gonna help kind of create a little bit of ambient light above your cutoff line because some people are obsessed with projector HID cutoff lines, but the reality is most people want a little bit of glare above that cutoff line. And this way, the majority of your light is below the cutoff line for safe driving, but you still do get a little bit of uh, flood above it. So that's actually kind of nice. Now look at how wide this beam pattern is on the United Pacific 5x7. If I pan it all the way, you can see you have this sliver of light and then it grows and grows and grows and gets to the center. And then the middle section is just huge and then it does the exact same thing going all the way out. So in terms of width, this is one of the widest beam patterns that you can get from any 5x7 LED headlight, eclipsed only by the JW Speaker 8900. If we go to high beam, watch what happens. Not only is the center section gonna get brighter, but we're gonna get this massive circle of light around the entire output. 
The cool thing about this one is that the low beam doesn't disappear like some LED headlights do. So all of the low beam light stays put, but now we have this huge emphasis on huge circle of light from the high beam, not to mention an extremely bright hot spot right in the middle, low beam and high beam. So impressive, yes. Affordable, yes. The United Pacific 5x7 is an awesome option, especially for the money. Up next, we have the JW Speaker 8900 Evolution. The old style 8900 has been discontinued. This is the new one released in 2015. You can see the beam pattern is beautiful. You can tell that JW Speaker is an expert in headlight engineering and manufacturing because they have all the light exactly where they want it to be. There's really nothing, you know, weird going on with shadows or extra beams of light like the truck light version does. Uh, so this is a really pretty light output. And in the real world, this is going to communicate into a really full and constant beam of light. You're not gonna have any dead spots or shadows when this is shining down the road in front of you. And this is really a characteristic of JW Speaker, how their light pattern looks. You've got all of the color spectrum displayed from red to yellow to white to blue and everything in between. But the cool thing that they did with the new 8900 Evolution besides lower the price is they made it a lot brighter. That center section where you have that really bright rectangular spot with the little blue line that kind of goes up and to the right, that is the new and improved DOT American uh, beam pattern characteristic. That's gonna allow a little bit more light to go up and above the cutoff line of the beam pattern without blinding oncoming drivers. And you can tell that that whole center section where the hot spot is, is very bright. Now right above that, we have another little bit of uh, light. It's not very bright, and that's gonna aid in above the cutoff flood lighting. So you're not gonna be completely blind above the cutoff. Just the majority of the light will stay safely below the cutoff line to shield oncoming driver's eyes from such a bright light. When we go to high beam, the only thing that's gonna really change is the center section. And this has gotta be the most impressive high beam that JW Speaker has made yet. Look at that, that is totally insane. It looks like a spaceship coming down at you. Not only does the center section magnify by like 10 times in width and brightness, but you also have some flooding from the outside of the beam pattern. So you go to low beam, you go to high beam, low beam, high beam. So your center left to right kind of half moon shape is still there, but it just adds a lot more light all over the place. And that high beam is just totally insane. The old high beam was a quarter of this light output. If you want the best of the best, you're looking at it. This is the JW Speaker 8900 Evolution. This is the low beam light output of the truck light 27450C. Now at first I was wondering if I had it upside down because the bottom side has a sharp cutoff just like the top side does, but I double checked and yeah, this right here is correct. The beam pattern is real interesting. It's not really like any other uh, lights out there. You can see the end, it's not in extremely wide, but it's you know definitely wide enough for a headlight. The end kind of has this odd arrow shaped taper at the, at, the, at the ends. But the thing I like about the far left and far right side is it doesn't get very dim. Um, it's almost the same brightness as the middle section of the beam pattern. It's not terribly wide, but it's definitely wide enough. And it's not very tall, but I think that's probably gonna be okay, especially if you have extra fog lights. Now the center hotspot area is uh, kind of impressive on the truck light version. You've got this sort of V-shaped extra bright spot, and then above that you have kind of some flaring or some, some glare, but it's really dim. So all of these LED headlights are doing a good job on low beam of not just giving you a razor sharp cutoff, but you actually do have some usable light above the cutoff. If we go to high beam, that entire low beam stays in place and all that's added is some extra high beam right in the center. Now if you'll notice, there really isn't a whole lot of peripheral light being added when you go to high beam. It all stays about the same 
except on the bottom you get some extra light. So the biggest thing that changes is that center section. And I really think on a long highway, that's gonna make a big difference. You're gonna be able to see a little bit in front of you, then when you fire on the high beams, you're not gonna be able to light up the trees or anything, but it should go a good distance down the road. Here's the generic Chinese 5x7 LED light. Um, you can see that the beam pattern sort of mimics the JW Speaker 8900 in terms of the shape. Um, the other thing that is the biggest you know, thing that stands out the most is the color. This has gotta be like a 7,000 or 8,000 K color. So if you like that kind of color, that's fine. But for poor condition driving, this is not a very good color to use. It's going to be extremely reflective and not work very well if you are in the rain or fog. This is the low beam. You can see it's quite narrow. It <coughs> it's quite narrow. The left to right spread is about half as wide as any of the other ones, if not less than that. It actually does produce a fair amount of light, but it has these strange uh, rings. And I really think that's gonna show up in your downplane beam pattern. It does have a nice cutoff, but above the cutoff, it has a lot of strange shapes. That might not bother you. It might not even show up going down the road, but I just thought I should point it out to you in case you cared. When you go to high beam, again, fairly impressive. Um, you're getting a lot of flood, which is nice but it's still not a very wide beam pattern. You got nothing that goes up real high, uh, nothing that goes real low. It's all kind of focused right in the center. So I think what you're gonna end up having with two of these on your headlight is two really narrow spotlights, but not a whole lot of flood left to right. The United Pacific 5x7 LED headlight is a great buy. It's good quality, the connector, and the uh, certifications are all there. It has a decent beam pattern, and it's got an extremely impressive high beam. The JW Speaker 8900 Evolution is still, in my opinion, the reigning world champ of 5x7 LED headlights. It's a little more expensive than the other ones, but honestly, you get what you pay for. Made in America, lifetime warranty, and an amazing beam pattern. You really can't go wrong with the JW Speaker 8900 Evolution. The truck light 5x7 LED is a good buy as well. It's decently priced, it has a good output, and there's really nothing that can go wrong with it unless it doesn't fit your application from dimensional specifications. But if you can get the truck light LED to fit, it's a good option. The generic Chinese 5x7, I would honestly just stay away from it. It's not built very well, it's not DOT approved, there's zero warranty, and even though it's fairly bright, the beam pattern left a lot to be desired. In my honest opinion, if you're gonna pick something, pick something with a name brand that you can get service for in the USA. My name is Chris, and this has been part one of our 5x7 headlight review. Stay tuned, because next, we're gonna show you some HID and halogen 5x7s in video part number two. Thanks for watching. You can find all of these for sale on www.headlightrevolution.com or our new sealed beam only website, headlightsuperstore.com.